Hey now, before we get to the breakdown of Bad Batch S3 E5, the return, little spoiler warning for everyone. Spoilers, you've been warned. Starting with the review, another solid episode of The Bad Batch here in its final season. I really like the return to the family dynamic. I mean, we haven't had that since with the last episode of 2 or season 2 when Omega got taken. And obviously since season 1 early on when Crosshair was still with the group. But in this episode, we we had that return, at least to the formula that The Bad Batch has become famous for. This, this group of dysfunctional clones hanging out, trying to survive post the Clone Wars as a family together. So I really appreciated that dynamic in this episode. Now that Crosshair is back, they brought, Te uh, I'm sorry, Echo, Omega, obviously, Wrecker and Hunter, and then the new member of the family, Batcher. So really enjoyed the return to the family dynamic. I, I think the best part about this episode, though, has to be the Crosshair and Hunter interactions. Um, you know, at the end of last week, it was like, uh-oh, the, the, the boys are pretty icy on Crosshair. But then we open this episode, and it, it, things seem all right. You know, Wrecker's definitely in a good place. Hunter doesn't seem as angry. But we do learn later in the episode that, yeah, Hunter's still got some beef. He needs Crosshair to kind of explain himself. And Crosshair being Crosshair and Hunter being Hunter, it, it, it takes the entire episode before they can work through their problems uh, of mistrust, the feelings of betrayal. And then the feelings, as we learn late on from Crosshair, of just being a, a bum and feeling like crap based on some of the actions he took with the Empire. So kind of seeing these two work through their issues and obviously having Omega, Wrecker, and Echo comment on those two and how they've always kind of had a bristly relationship was a nice side of this episode. And really this episode's main mission was to get the Batch family dynamic back together to resolve the issues between Hunter and Crosshair. And clearly that happened by the end. So uh, I would say mission accomplished for the return. I also appreciate all the callbacks to season two, in particular the episode where Crosshair does finally realize that the Empire is using him and he shoots Lieutenant Nolan. I mean, we went back to the same planet, Barton 4 here. We saw the Ice Vulture and the episode focused on that motif, just like it did back in season two when Crosshair made the fateful choice to murder his lieutenant and end up locked up on Mount Tantus. If there's any downsides to this episode, it was the complete lack of an Imperial narrative thread check-in. I mean, we got nothing outside of Echo and Omega learning a bit more from Nalase's data pad, which she brought with him from the escape. I mean, you didn't really learn anything that, oh yeah, there's a lot of clones in Tantus. Uh, we didn't get any more lore revelations, and as I said, no shift in the narrative focus. Over to Hemlock, Tantus, anything Imperial. So that was a bit of a bummer, but overall, another solid episode of The Bad Batch. Move things forward predominantly through rebuilding the relationships with the core Batch team. And of course, their new dog, Batcher, who seems to be a hero in and of herself. I mean, she, she's a new member. She Look at all the stuff she did in this episode. Digging holes, scouting the perimeter, it, barking at worms. You gotta love her. Okay, moving into some of the top moments from this episode. I'm gonna start with Omega's line when she, you know, her and Crosshair are arguing a bit on, hey, I, I have the skills to come on this mission with you guys. And uh, Crosshair calls her a little kid and she's like, hey, you are my little brother. So, you know, technically she's right. It was kind of funny hearing her call him out. You got to remember, Omega would have been, been born 10 years prior to the start of the Clone Wars where, you know, Batch, Clone Force 99, your regular clones, they had their accelerated aging. So they aren't as old in traditional years. I also like the end of this scene where, you know, Wrecker kind of comes back and gives Crosshair's armor. You can clearly see Wrecker, unlike Hunter, maybe even Echo, is he's, he's over it. His brother's back. He's good. He loves him again, gives him an armor. It, it was a nice moment. Some brotherly love going on right there. Next top moment, speaking of that armor, is seeing Crosshair in that armor. It is good to see him back in his gray and red Sweet little sniper get up there. He has one of the cooler helmets with the reticle on the eye. His shoulder pauldron with that spiky thing coming off. And if you notice here, his his theme has changed a little bit. It, it's, it's not as dark. It seemed a little more uplifting once he got his armor back. Another step in bringing Crosshair back into his Bad Batch family fold. 
And the last top moment here is probably the conversation between Hunter and Crosshair at the very end, where Crosshair finally breaks. You know, obviously he doesn't get all emotional, but he, but he finally breaks down a little bit and reveals to Hunter his his grief, his his sorrow, his uh, kind of disgust in, in himself for the acts he committed with the Empire. And you could see that that has been weighing on him and, and affecting his relationship with Hunter and the rest of the batch, ultimately. But Hunter giving him the okay, saying like, hey man, we, we've all been, done stuff that we regret. We just got to hope that we can get better moving forward. So it was a nice exclamation point on this episode, in particular the kind of the uh, mistrust between Hunter and Crosshair. And by the end, after the mission with the worm and, and getting the intel, they had worked through their beef, and it seems moving forward we're going to kind of be working with a, a group that is all on the same level. Everyone respects each other. Everyone knows that they're in it for their comrades. So good stuff there. All right, going into eggs and references. I mean, saying Easter eggs at this point in time in this Bad Batch season is a joke, but we did get a plenty of references, starting with hearing the name Shep and Liana. If you remember them, those are the kind of mayor and his daughter of Pabu who welcomed in Hunter and the Batch in Season 2. So nice getting a name drop there, and it seems they're taking care of our Batchers quite well. If you forgot, on Pabu, we got these little uh, monkey things. These are called Munoz, so we got a return for them. As mentioned earlier, we also went back to Barton 4, which was this uh, remote Imperial outpost from uh, the Season 2 episode title, The Outpost. Uh, like I said, this is where Crosshair killed Lieutenant Nolan, met Mayday, went on that mission with him, and, and kind of realized, like, yeah, the Empire sucks. I'm out. So it, it, this planet has a a major impact on on crosshair as we saw throughout this episode and of course uh, you know sticking with references from last season we had the ice vulture return and check in on his buddy crosshair uh, st sticking with callbacks from season two of the bad batch you can see crosshair reflecting on his buddy mayday by looking at his helmet and, and you have to figure those other helmets belong to hex and veach the clones he met while he was still a part of the Empire back in Season 2. And this last one here may be a stretch, maybe, it, it, maybe it's a, a reference, maybe it's just inspired by, but that worm, the W-Y-R-M worm, kind of looks a little bit like these Sith worms from Legends, and, and it looks like other Star Wars role-playing games, card games, so on and so forth. So, I don't know, what do you think, Sith worm or not? Either way, that wraps my breakdown of Bad Batch S3 E5, The Return. If you dig this type of content or you just like talking Star Wars live, make sure to turn tune into the Star Wars Time Show Wednesdays 5 p.m. YouTube.com slash Star Wars Time Show. Don't forget to comment, like, sub, do what you got to do. We love you. There's always time for Star Wars Time. Don't you forget it. And if you listen to our little show, the Force will be with you always. Always.